G'day YouTube, it's Turbo Tristan again, and it's time to go over another update on where we're at with the Evo build. So I've done a bit of stuff here in the front end. We'll talk about that in just a moment. I hope you guys are really, really enjoying the Evo content, and I'm sorry there's not more how-tos and in-depth build stuff. I'm kind of just showing what I'm doing once I've kind of done it because I'm not an Evo expert. I've spent a lot of time playing with Hondas and Nissans, but not really much with Mitsubishi. They're pretty easy to work on, and I do recommend getting an Evo or any Mitsubishi, even just a base model land, so they're very easy to work on. Uh, but I'm still trying to figure out where everything goes. So since the last video, we've fitted a new front mount intercooler. Now I've gone with a 500 wide, 300 high, three inch thick intercooler it's a bar and plate basic track and all street duties bar and plate is the best it slows the air down and does more cooling but it still allows the perfect amount of flow through to the radiator maddie from next level fabrications has taken my old one and made some brackets so that this all fits and i've test fitted a few times uh, with the bumper bar on and i've gone with a 45 degree raceworks elbow uh, all the, the throttle body that I'm going to use is going to be a standard one. So we're going back to two and a half inch um, pipes. So it's going to come out of the turbo, go up to two and a half inch to three inch through the intercooler, out at three inch and then back to two and a half inch. The factory pipes are just slightly smaller than two and a half inch. So it's still an upgrade. Plus we're going hard pipes. Now let's go take a look over here at the old intercooler and you'll see why I didn't run with that one. So this one is a tube and fin, so you can see here it's rounded um, and they're very small. There is a lot of tubes for the air to flow through, but they are very small. This is beat up to the absolute crap. I did hit it with the wire wheel and clean it up, but you can see this one is pressed in um, and crimped on. So you do tend to leak a fair bit of air around here once these get to a certain age. This one has also been beaten up from the underside and it looks like absolute crap on there. There's those joins I was telling you about that are crimped up. It's going to be impossible to see, but I've gotten a torch and shone that through there. In those tubes is lots of little tiny rocks clumps of stuff you can see clumps of dust particles so whether it's oil that's clogged up and caught bits of dust that have made it through the filter it's old it's dirty there's a very high chance it's leaking so we want to keep the boost in the engine so we're going to a bigger intercooler and you can see this one is brand new and perfect cast polished on the inside end tanks polished on the outside so it's going to flow nicely the next thing we've done is i was going to run a bigger power steering cooler um, because this one is tiny and it's a bit old and beat up but it's going to do the job and it was a lot of mucking around to make brackets and everything for this the oil cooler it was definitely worth me fixing that one up because this one is really badly beat let's show you the front that's the front there beaten up and it was really small. It will have particles of whatever has been through the oil, through the engine and through all the filters stuck in the oil cooler. Not many it won't do its job, but it's gonna be best if we replace it. So that one over there was an eight row. This is a 10 row. So I've got a 10 row oil cooler with dash 10 fittings. Uh, this is the one that was on Ronda and it's a little bit hacked up because I've been just mocking it up and everything. And I was going to use this, but I actually nicked it on the back with the grinder. So that's why I didn't bother finishing up all of this, but I made a bracket. Uh, I've mounted that where it needs to go. It's that much wider than the old one. And it's also brand new. So we're going to stick this in storage and just keep it with all the stock car parts that came off the car. And I'll get the new one put on. I've also spaced it a little bit further forward away from the washer bottle and also closer to the vent here so the air actually goes and hits it and goes through the cooler. So that should work well, plus new Raceworks braided lines with the heat sheathing on there. It's going to be unreal. I do have also a new radiator. 
I've got an Evo 6 style radiator, which moves the hose fitting from there to there. Not a big deal. I do have Evo 6 black silicon hoses to run as well. And that's gonna just give more room for intercooler pipes and also air intake pipes. Plus it's gonna keep the pipe away from the turbo. It actually used to sit right above the turbo uh, and yeah, hot air rises, it's gonna heat up the water, it's gonna heat up everything around there. So we move that just over a little bit. We briefly touched on it last time, but we've got the new Protex uh, Ultra Plus rotors and Ultra Plus performance pads. And we've got everything on there set up. But that's where I'm up to with that. Now, one thing I am gonna do today is I'm gonna fit this brand new Raceworks billet alloy fuel rail. Now this comes with some dash six fittings for the ends. I've actually gone up to a dash eight because I just wanna keep a lot of fuel pressure in there. I'm gonna dash eight filter, dash eight lines, and there's a dash eight return to the fuel pressure reg, and then dash six back to the tank. I'm gonna stick that on. We've also got, I'm gonna put, I've got this on the spoolup.com.au website. Uh, these are available on there. So I'm also going to do a pack on the Spool Up website with the fuel rail and with the Raceworks injectors. I'll be running 1200cc modified Bosch injectors and we've also got these little end pieces that need to go on there as well uh, for the fuel rail and for pressing into the manifold. So these will be available as a kit on the Spool Up website by the time you see this video. So I'll get some photos and everything of these, chuck them up. I've put these together, just a little bit of um, Vaso or petroleum jelly on the O-rings before fitting them. And now I'll put a little bit more on here, fit them to the rail, fit them to the engine. So I'm running with the OEM intake plenum and I've also sold that 70 mil throttle body that was here. I'm going back to an OE size one. My turbo is gonna be OE size, OE location. It's gonna be high flowed. So we, it's not gonna need massive intercooler pipes, massive throttle body, plus it's forced induction and we're not gonna be running huge boost, maybe 18 PSI at absolute max. And we're running two and a half inch intercooler pipes. So we only need a 60 mil throttle body, which is just under two and a half inch. So we're going back to OE factory for that OE plus look and design just paired with some nice bolt-ons from Racework. So the fuel injectors, the fuel rail, the coil on plug. So we're solving a lot of issues. I've started to piece the engine together. This is not bolted down just yet because I'm waiting on a gasket and I'm waiting on a turbo to come back. But I've fitted brand new from Raceworks a cam sensor. Let's do some mods. Let's get the fuel rail on there. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. After only about two minutes, she's all fitted up. Injectors are in. How good does that black anodized Raceworks look? 1200 cc's, dash eight in and out lines, nicely zinc coated brand new bolts. I've sealed off the internal feed port. Uh, you can run that if you're running a really big setup. So like you're going for 500 plus horsepower, you can have a center feed, which sends the fuel out evenly from the center out. So everyone gets the same amount of fuel and then the injectors fire and the pressure's coming from the middle so rather than coming in one end and it goes here first then there then there then there you can come in the center and go outwards we don't need that we're doing oem plus like we keep saying and my goal for this car is around about 220 to 250 kilowatts at the wheels at all four wheels which is probably nearly double factory power but still nice and reliable um, so I'm just running it in one side, out the other to the fuel rig just behind here. And I think that is awesome. Tell me down below, what size injectors do you think I should put in the kit? I was going to do a 1200cc injector set with the fuel rail and fittings and also a 1500cc, but let, let me know if you guys reckon I should do more bigger injectors. 2000s are also good if you're going for big power. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think, or should I just put a set of thousands or 550s or 
750s in a kit and set it up on spoolup.com.au. Couple of other things we've done also is I've fitted up the brand new Protex slave cylinder for the clutch. And we've got the brand new bearing on there. That's all been sorted out, greased up. Um, it was pretty rusty to get that um, pin out. So I've fixed all that up and tapped back in the plug. So we're all good to go there. Rebuilt diff as you saw in the last video. And for anyone wondering, I just snugged it down with the Ugga Duggers. It was just quicker doing it that way. Just as soon as it got close, but stop. I didn't like Ugga Dugga the hell out of it. So she's all safe, didn't strip any threads. For the engine, next up, hopefully next week, I can put the crank in, seal up the sump, do all the timing stuff get the engine up on my bench and put the gearbox on. And if we do all that, we'll have a very, very big surprise for you guys, which is the brand new Exidy Evolution clutch. I'm just waiting on the other parts to these uh, King Racing bearings. We got these from Pro Speed up in Sydney. And um, these are the new bees knees of uh, race bearings. They've got a few extra coatings and things that don't come on ACL. So I've always only ever used ACL race bearings, um, but this time around, I'm just gonna give these a try from the guys at Pro Speed. They, they came highly recommended. So we don't know till we try, and they're definitely gonna be better than what was in there because there was crank walking all around the shop. Another thing that I just wanted to quickly um, gloss over was we fitted all new sensors to everything here. So we've got the water temp uh, for the dash, for the fan switch, We've got a new oil pressure sensor. I don't know if I have a new knock sensor, so I've got to have a look in my box of tricks and see if I have a new one of those, and then I can get that on. And it's just a matter of time waiting for parts to show up. So I just wanted to show you guys my custom intercooler setup. We will be doing custom intercooler pipes. I'm even considering moving my battery into the boot and putting a massive battery in there. Uh, just to run everything. We've got a custom oil cooler setup, which is bigger, more efficient, newer, and cleaner than the old one. So that's going on with new lines. It's getting there slowly but surely. I have still been in the shed almost every night, but just doing tiny, tiny little things. Uh, next on the list is also painting the bonnet hinges, but the paint shop was closed. Uh, we've got these painted up. Uh, this is the water line, so they're all nice and uh, heat silver from VHT. Once everything's all done to this car and it's all put back together, the thing's gonna let it down the most. It's gonna look like a bit of a nugget is the faded paint on the outside. Under the bonnet, under the car, every single nut and bolt, everything's gonna be brand new. Interior's gonna be immaculate and flawless, but then we're gonna have this average looking paint on the outside. So I would paint that and get it all mint and perfect if I could afford to. And the only way I can afford to is if you guys watch, subscribe and share. Let's grow the channel together and let's get onto some bigger, better and badder projects in the future. But that's gonna pull it up for now. Shout out in this video to Raceworks and Protex and also Next Level Fabrication. We've got those guys to thank for what we're doing now. I have a spal fan, which I'm gonna run. It's just one I had laying around. I've tested it, it works perfectly. We're gonna run that on the alloy twin core radiator. The factory fan down here, I'm just gonna change out the plug and put it on that one. This weighs a ton, it's crusty, it's rusty, and it's not that efficient. That blade design uh, is good for a standard car. We need to pull a lot of air through the front of the car, through the intercooler, the condenser, and also the radiator. So we're going with the big fan here. Uh, normally I would run a Maradine fan. They're better than the Spal ones, but I just had this one laying around and it's a, it's a genuine Spal. So I'll use that to get me out of trouble. We'll get next level fab to make up some brackets to mount that to the back of the fan. I'm not gonna do a full shroud or anything uh, as this one wasn't sealed and was pretty useless. So I think with this on there, pressed up against the radiator with a nice bracket, we're gonna be fine. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Check spoolup.com.au for the fuel rails uh, and any of the other parts that you've seen on this build, the coil packs, whatever you like, all the sensors, we're gonna have all those up there. So thanks for watching. 
bring the boost and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.